Have you ever gone to drag some objects into your inspector panel only to realize that you've forgotten to click the inspector lock icon? Suddenly you've lost your selection. You have to go through the hassle of selecting again, clicking the miniature icon, and then finding your objects again in the project panel. Let's make a mini tool that will solve that issue and stay to the end because we're also going to deal with that miniature constrained proportion lock icon as well. So what we're going to do is write a little editor script that will have a hotkey associated with it and we'll just be able to toggle this on and off with key command. Let's open Rider. Well, I'm going to call my class Lock Inspector. You can call yours whatever you want. It needs one uh, public static method. I'm going to call this method Lock. The Active Editor Tracker class is used to track the Active Editor window for a specific asset. All we're doing is we're going to toggle that on and off to what it used to be. You guys will see I'm using Copilot. Um, I always do because it's amazing. Now, um, let's. Uh, we also need to force a reload on this thing. So the, that method is called force rebuild. Then let's add one method uh, just to validate this. We don't want to use it if there actually is nothing to lock. So what we'll do is look at the array that's stored inside the shared tracker holding all the active editors and let's make sure that its length is not zero. And then uh, what do we need? Some attributes here uh, because we want to have a hotkey. So let's make this a menu item. Um, the, uh, you see Copilot's filling it all in for me. Although I don't think I want it in the tools menu. Let's put this in the edit menu. So I'm just going to replace that uh, quickly. And let's see, just got to replace it in both places. The, the attribute has to be the same in both of these. And let's just for now, let's make it command L. Makes sense. <laughs> Can always change that later. And again, we ha this has to repeat in the uh, valid um, method as well. It has to have the, the hotkey in there. So once this is done, let's uh, save that up, refresh, and we'll go back to Unity. And then we'll try that out. So if you go and look in the menu now under edit, that'll be there. But, uh, and oh, one more thing, just, I'm just going to repeat this. This has to be in an editor folder. And yeah, let's uh, play this, play around with this. As you can see, I'm going to start toggling it. Just command L. On off, on off. There we go. Easy. I'll never miss it again. But uh, we should also look at this new constrained proportions icon, which is so small, I just can't ever click it. And I, ne I always forget to click it until I'm halfway done making my edits. So what I think is that we should just lock it every time we lock the inspector. We'll lock that too. But to do that, we got to use reflection. So this is a little bit more complicated. Uh, what we're going to do here is we need to find that transform that's in that editor. So let's cycle through the active editors that are being tracked. And we're going to um, find one that's a transform. So let's see here. If, if the editor target, let's see, is not transform, let's just bail out. If the target is the transform, let's grab it. Yes, Copilot's it doesn't always come up with the right solutions, especially for stuff like this. So if it, when it does that, you can just escape or keep typing. So there we go. We got our transform. Let's, uh, now we want to find this property. Um, so to do that, we're going to get the type, we're going to get the property. Now, I already know what the name is because I went and found it. Uh, and we're, we're going to look at that at the end. Uh, we need to just get it by name and we're going to set some binding flags. I'm just going to move that to another line so it's readable. So we, this is a non-public and we know it's in an instance. So now 
if the property is null for some reason, bail out. Uh, we don't need to continue, but let's find the value of that property now. So we know it's a Boolean because it's a, something that you toggle on and off, right? And also because I went and looked at it. And then we just want to set it to whatever it was, the opposite of its value is, right? And now everything else in here is exactly the same. So uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, let's see, let's save this up and let's head back refresh and let's make sure that it works and then we'll just talk about a little bit more about reflection there you go you can see both of them are flipping on and off whenever i hit command l and uh, hopefully that'll save you guys as much time as it saved me now as to how to find this stuff and also if you hover over that little constraint proportion link you'll see that it has a tooltip that says enable constrain proportion. Now we know that this is part of the transform instance, so it's probably inside the transform class. Makes sense, right? You could look for it in the active editor tracker, but it's more likely that it's going to be inside the transform. So in Rider, if you click into this, control click for most people, I believe, uh, it'll start decompiling it and we can go and have a look. And what I would do first is search for that tooltip. But I know it's not here already. Let's try the word constrain. That makes more sense. If we, yeah, there we go. Here it is, internal Boolean. So yeah, obviously there's no public access to this field. Um, the only way to get to it is with reflection, but we could uh, search for its usages. Let's find out how Unity calls this uh, field. How is it getting set? Um, and may, that might give us some clues. It might give us some clues as to other ways to turn this thing on and off. Uh, because we don't, we don't always have to just set it by a, a property. So here we go. Here's a method, set constraint proportions. Uh, this is also a, an un, internal method, so we, we don't have access to this directly. But it is another way if you, if you wanted to get into that. Reflection is basically the ability of a program to examine and modify its own structure and behavior at runtime. So it enables developers to access and manipulate classes, objects, properties, and methods dynamically without having to necessarily define things at compile time. In future videos, I want to get into some more interesting uses of, of reflection. Uh, where you can instantiate things like editor windows in memory, uh, which is useful if you have ever run into the problem of trying to import a bunch of humanoid animations, for example, that are all broken. Well, nobody wants to go and manually fix 50 humanoid animations that don't have avatars, all have the wrong name, and most importantly, they all need to be retargeted. So that's something you can automate and and we are going to automate that. So stay tuned for that one.